I'm gonna give you the five lifts that you don't want to try, but should, and we're gonna start right now. So when we're looking at weightlifting, we've gotta look through that lens of, we need to lift as much weight as possible overhead in the snatch or to our chest and then overhead in the clean and jerk. That's the lens that we're looking at. We wanna be as competitive as possible. Okay, so if we're using exercises, those exercises need to fuel that lens. That's it. We have to understand one, we can increase our actual strength and that could be through squats, that could be through front squats, that could be through single leg squats, that could be through pulls, that could be through pulls to target, that could be deadlifts. Those are all exercises to increase our overall performance. Now, the next thing is that we have to look at that lens of technique. We have to one, understand that our technique should be based off of pushing our knees back off the floor, getting just below the knee, and then understanding we should stay flat footed as our chest comes up. And then as the bar comes around the knee, the hips will start to extend as we stay flat footed, the chest keeps coming up. We'll make contact ideally. And in the clean jerk, the clean's gonna be very similar. We wanna also have a very tight dip on the jerk. That's gonna be very vertical. 50% of our weight goes forward on the jerk. 50% of our weight goes backward on the jerk. Those are crash courses on technique. But what exercises can we use that can also supplement that technique that you should be trying, but you're too scared to. We're gonna go into that first key exercise and that's gonna be improving your snatch by doing a seven second pause below the knee snatch. What would typically happen is we're gonna get set in that snatch position. We're gonna grab the bar as we're about to snatch. Nothing is changing except for we will pause directly below the knee and that's where we're gonna be entering into no man's land, okay? But what happens is that we've seen through research from Stu McGill that our back, our erectors, our spinalis responds very, very well to isometric actions and that has something to do with rate coding. And so if we pause below the knee, just prior to entering into no man's land, we're loading the hamstrings we're strengthening the back, we're keeping the chest upright, and then we're also feeling that position much more. And typically, almost all snatches are lost from either right below the knee or getting right above the knee. And so if we can push this seven second pause snatch pretty freaking high and we get comfortable doing that, it makes snatching from the floor really, really easy. So try that today. Now I would recommend this. If you're gonna do doubles, just pause for four seconds, but don't do the one, two, three, four, go. Do the one, two, three, four, snatch. Actually have a timer of four seconds or seven seconds. I wouldn't do more than doubles. I like using seven singles with that seven second pause. That's gonna have great time under tension. You're gonna have better feeling. You're gonna strengthen the back and improve your overall technique. And it's gonna lead to better performance on the platform. Now that next lift is gonna be based more around the clean and jerk. So one factor that we have to bring into play is that there's an aspect of getting under the bar. And I don't necessarily like to say drop under the bar. I actually like to think about being active under the bar. There is an aspect of impulse, which is how much force can you develop in a short period of time. In weightlifting, time is designated by distance, okay? So one lift that you can use that you may not have ever tried is a timed two box triple. And typically I recommend these boxes being about six to seven and a half inches, somewhere in that range. Ours are seven inches. If you are just above the knee, in most cases, you would be just above the knee with that two box position. I want to see clean triples done within 12 to 15 seconds from that two box position. What ends up happening is you catch, you can stand about halfway up, dump, pull really tight, catch, stand halfway back up, and then hit that third one, stand it all the way up. You end up blowing up your quad strength. You learn how to be more active with your shrug and more active with wrapping those elbows around the bar. And in turn, you're actually tighter in your trunk. So you have better trunk control when you're catching that and you have better, more precise execution of the clean. One common thing with weightlifters is that they'll say they're doing a double or they'll say that they're doing triples. And that double basically looks like a cluster set. They hit a single and then they rest 30 seconds and they hit a single or they'll hit 
it a triple and it takes them three minutes to get the triple done. That's not a, that's not a triple. So what we want to do is we put that time constraint on the triple and because we're in a shorter range of motion, that leads to greater impulse expression. And then on top of that, because we're also pulling from an easier position, it's not as hard on our back like pulling from the floor with a clean would be. So it's something that you can use to really improve your catch position, improve that impulse expression and lead to more time under tension, which is very hard to do when you're doing traditional weightlifting movements. So timed two box cleans, I'd recommend doing four to five sets, build up to a heavy triple and time yourself with a clock. This is gonna take us to that third crazy exercise. And we were fortunate enough that at the World Championships where we had two different athletes competing. Jacob Horse, Haley Riker competing at the World Championships in Bogota, Colombia. And that's where we saw this exercise. And this is a three pump snatch, three pump high pull to a snatch. Now we've used two pump snatches. I've always used these for our throwers. We've been using pump snatches since 2014. So you're gonna go pump, high pull, pump, high pull, pump, high pull, snatch. The big thing here is the eccentric load on the back, on the hamstrings. You're also learning how to keep that bar active with your shoulders and that's gonna to lead to a faster turnover. Another big factor is that we wanna see when we're finishing the high pull, we're actually in a flat footed position because that's typically where you're gonna be when you're receiving that bar, when it's coming off the hip. So try three pump snatches, slowly build into them. I would say take four to eight weeks to feel what they're supposed to be like. And then over a long period of time, you're gonna notice your traps are gonna get yoked, your delts are gonna get yoked, and you're gonna have a better finish in the traditional snatch. Now this fourth key exercise is going to be extraordinarily challenging. And this is a movement we refer to as Dane cleans. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick that bar up and we're gonna hang it for a clean and we're gonna actually pump from below the knee. So a Dane clean or a Dane snatch means that we're pumping from the floor to the knee and we're not actually clearing past the knee until we're executing that full lift. Keep that below the knee. And you'll pick that bar up, go to just below the knee, pump down, pump back up, pump down, and then execute that lift. And this is where you're gonna see a tremendous improvement in that lower back. You're gonna have better connection into the hip and from that hip to the catch, you're gonna have a tighter catch position from that tension in your back and in your abs. I would also recommend one big factor here is that you've got to periodize properly. So you have to understand how to properly periodize a pause snatch with Dane cleans with those two boxes. And that's what we do inside of our app peak strength where we're releasing Olympic weightlifting as a program inside of peak strength. You can head over to peakstrength.app and pick up the app today for seven free days of training to try out those Olympic weightlifting movements to become a better weightlifter. And that takes us to that fifth and final key exercise, and this is going to help us in that overhead position. We haven't talked about jerks much outside of the technique. This is a complex I absolutely love, and this is a power jerk, split jerk. Now, the power jerk, prior to the split jerk, does two different things. First, it's hard to do two different movements, and what that forces you to do is actually focus on your technical patterning. The power jerk also doesn't let you have room for error. You have to be very stiff, very upright with that drive, very upright with getting underneath and punching. Now, the split jerk, you can get away with having a little bit forward, a little bit backward, a little to the side, but that doesn't mean that we should do that. So if we're using that power jerk, split jerk, to elicit a big response in our split jerk, that's going to lead to better technique. One week we might do six, two power jerks, one split jerk. Then the next week we might do five singles of each and then five singles of just the split jerk after we remove that power jerk. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.